<clears throat> All right, no. So once again, guys, welcome back to our transmission media and antenna systems lecture three radio wave propagation. All right, no. So uh, we're going to I don't know uh, study no another means of uh, I mean mode. I mean, <laughs> uh, tawag dito, uh, transmission media. No? So, another transmission media. Kasi last time, di ba, uh, we have discussed the transmission lines and then the optical fibers. So, now, let's talk about another type of transmission media, which is radio wave. Alright? So, game. Let's start. Okay. So, before we begin the actual lecture, guys, no, meron tayong quote for the day. Ano daw ang sabi? Sabi daw, study without desire spoils the memory and it retains nothing that it takes in. No? So, sabi ni Leonardo da Vinci. Ayan, no? So, uh, minsan na, ano to, no? na-experience natin to, no? na uh, we study, no? nag-aaral tayo, we try really hard no? uh, to study. But uh, it seems that walang pumapasok sa isip natin. Right? Uh, even no matter how hard we try, okay, studying, uh, at the end of our study session, parang wala tayong natutunan, no? So, sabi ni Leonardo da Vinci, that's because we are studying without the desire, no? Kailangan, uh, gusto mo talaga, no? Na, ano, no? Na, you're, ano, no? Uh, you really want, no? To study. And to do that, no, you should have your own motivation, no. Because kapag ka, uh, hindi ka motivated, no, you're not motivated, so you don't have any wish, no, to study. So what will happen is, sabi nga niya, uh, it will spoil your memory, no. So ano ba tagal ng spoil? Mapapanis daw, de ba? Mapapanis daw ang memory natin, and wala tayong ano guys, uh, matututunan sa mga pinagalala natin. So whenever you study, no, uh, one of uh, tips that I can give to you or I can share to you is always find your motivation. Always think, no, bakit ka ba nag-aaral in the first place? And maybe, no, if you have your motivation na, uh, you'll be able to, ano, no, desire with, I mean, desire to, like, you're able to study with desire, okay? All right. Okay, so ano yung mga topics natin? Parang maikli lang, guys, no? Uh, yung mga lesson objectives natin, no? So, gonna revisit the concept of TEM wave. Then, we're gonna learn the different wave parameters and properties of TEM wave. We're going to understand the optical properties of the TEM wave. Okay, uh, we're gonna enumerate the radio frequency spectrum and we're gonna discuss the different modes of radio wave propagation. So, it seems na konti lang yung didiscuss natin but actually, our topic is uh, quite long. So, please uh, bear with me, no? If we will be extending, no? Uh, more than one and a half hour, no? In our class. So, baka lang magpas tayo sa one and a half hour. Anyway, so game, let's start. Okay, so uh, review natin guys, no, yung transverse electromagnetic wave. So we have learned, no, transverse electromagnetic wave from our uh, transmission line class, di ba? So an TEM wave, okay, basically is a uh, radio wave na merong magnetic field at electric field, no? Kaya nga siya tinawag na electromagnetic. And the word transverse, so it means that the direction no, of propagation is perpendicular to the ano, magnetic field and electric field. So, bali perpendicular silang tatlo. No? So, kung naalala nyo pa yung gantong uh, symbol, ay yung hand sign natin, right? So, electric field, magnetic field, at okay, direction of propagation. Okay? So, yung pinag-aaralan nga lang natin before, nasa loob ng transmission line. No, so what if uh, lalabas na siya sa transmission line? Uh, by the way, no, yung term natin na lumalabas sa transmission line, ang tawag natin doon ay radiation, no? So nagra-radiate na siya. Okay? So pag nagra-radiate na siya, no, ano na yung magiging characteristic niya? Okay, no? So una, we have the wave velocity. So we uh, everyone, no, knows the uh, speed of the transverse electromagnetic wave is the same, no, as the speed of light, no, in free space. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Pero pag hindi na siya nasa free space, 'di ba? Meron na siyang uh, formula, no? Uh, kung nare-recall nyo pa to, yung velocity equals C over square root of ER. So, 'di ba, this is what we call as the propagation velocity or velocity of propagation. Okay. So let's try to uh, answer no uh, this uh, question guys. So determine the speed okay of the TEM wave in a polyethylene dielectric material. Okay? So what's the formula for this one? So VP okay is simply equal sa uh, C over square root ng Okay, so what's the relative permittivity or the dielectric constant of polyethylene? So that's 2.27, guys, right? 
Oh, so what will be our BP? Sige nga, paki-compute nga guys. So kindly help me know what will be the value of that. Ayan. So sa midterm exam natin, no, kapares lang ng prelim exam, same time, same schedule. Uh, Saturday, yeah. Kani ginawa ng prelim ganun din. Pero on topics ay uh, fiber optics and eto, yung dinidiscuss natin, wave propagation. Oh, sige nga guys, what's the ano, no? What's the answer? Paki-compute nga po. Okay, we have 1 point. Okay, 1 point uh, 99. Okay, times 10 to the uh, 8. Tama po ba? Tama naman. Okay, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay. All right. Nice. So, that's for the wave velocity. Okay. So, next natin guys, we have uh, the frequency and the wavelength. So, uh, pamilyar naman tayo lahat dito guys, right? Sa frequency and wavelength. So, pag sinabi natin frequency, so, ito ay the number of cycles, no? In one, uh, in one complete electromagnetic wave, right? The number of cycles in second. And yung wavelength naman is the, actually the length, no? Of one cycle, right? So, yung formula natin is simply C over F, no? Very basic. So next na pag-usapan natin guys is polarization. Yan, polarization. So what is the polarization? So polarization refers to the physical orientation of the electric field vector on space. So as you can see no, on your screens, no, yung example natin ng, ano, ng transverse electromagnetic wave, yung may violet tsaka may orange. So as you can see there, no, tingin nyo, no, anong polarization ng wave natin na to? So, what's the polarization of this, guys? Again, polarization is the physical orientation ng electric field. So, what can you say about dun sa kulay orange? Kasi kulay orange yung electric field, eh, no? Is it uh, vertical or horizontal? Yung polarization nito, nung ating illustration. So, what do you think? So, that is vertically polarized, right? So, this is under linear polarization and then vertical. Okay? Kasi patayo siya. So, ang lagi mong titignan or yung reference mo is the electric field vector. Okay? So, meron pa tayo, no? Uh, for example, as you can see here, we have circularly polarized naman, no? So, circular polarization. Uh, nangyayari yun kapag ka umiikot yung ano, uh, electric field vector in space mo. Okay? Elliptical polarization is the same as circular polarization except that uh, the energies no, of the electric field and the magnetic field are not equal. Okay, and finally, random polarization is a polarization that has no fixed pattern. Okay, so nagagets ba ang polarization? Now, the question is, bakit mahalaga ang polarization? No? So, what's the importance of polarization? Bakit kailangan siyang malaman no? uh, in the study of wireless communication? So, it's important to know the polarization because the polarization of your signal must be the same sa polarization ng iyong antena. Nagets guys? So kung ano polarization ng signal mo, dapat yung antena na gagamitin mo, okay, uh, for uh, that signal, dapat same ng polarization. No? So kung ang antena mo ay vertically polarized, it can only receive or transmit vertically polarized signals. On the other hand, if your antenna is horizontally polarized, ang pwede niya lang ma-receive o ma-send is horizontally polarized signal din. Naintindihan, guys. So, importante na malaman mo yung polarization ng signal mo to be able to uh, choose no, a correct antenna for your system. Okay? So, nagigets, guys. no So, kaya siya uh, mahalaga. Alright? So, yan. I hope that ano, no? uh, everyone no? understands. Okay. So, next natin, guys, uh, we have the ray and the wave front. So, ang ray, guys, basically, this is a line that points uh, to the direction of the uh, wave, no? And the wave front naman, guys, is if you have a, uh, like, a, a cross-sectional area here, so yung mabubuo doon, yung matitrace doon sa cross-sectional area na ilalagay mo that will intercept your uh, transverse electromagnetic wave, that is basically the wave front. Okay? So yung ray and wave front guys, it's more on the 
uh, ano eh, no? it's more on the illustration. No? So, in real life, wala namang ganyan yung mga signals natin. Okay, yung transverse electromagnetic wave natin, wala pong ganyan, no? So, kumbaga, it's only uh, present, no, when we uh, actually try to visualize uh, the, these uh, transverse electromagnetic wave. Okay? So, ray, again, is the line drawn along the direction of propagation of the wave. And the wave front is, yan, no? So, yun yung parang uh, pag naglagay ka or in-intercept mo ng isang cross-section yung iyong uh, transverse electromagnetic wave, yun yung figure na mabubuo sa iyong cross-section. No? So, that is the wave front. Okay? So, next, guys, is the intrinsic characteristic impedance. Uh, as you recall, guys, no, the transverse electromagnetic wave has two parts, the electric field intensity and the magnetic field intensity. So, ano bang unit ni electric field intensity? So, the unit of the electric field intensity is what? The unit is volts per meter. Tapos, si magnetic field intensity naman is ampere per meter. Now, if you divide the two, Pag dinivide mo yung uh, electric field intensity mo tsaka yung magnetic field intensity mo, E over H, ang mangyayari is parang magiging volts per meter divided by ampere per meter. So, what's the unit? Ohms. So, basically, guys, no, the ratio of the electric field intensity and the magnetic field intensity is a resistance or an impedance. So, anong tawag natin sa impedance na ito? This is the intrinsic characteristic impedance. Okay? Now, Kung nasa free space tayo, the intrinsic characteristic impedance is 120 pi or approximately 377 ohms. Okay? Ayan. So, bali, ito, yung square root ng mu O over E O, ito po yung pag-compute kay 377. Okay? So, square root of mu O over E O. So, kumbaga, itong formula na to na nasa right nyo, uh, this one is for the free space. However, paano pagka ganito? Determine the intrinsic characteristic impedance in a polyethylene dielectric material. Okay, so let's try to solve that uh, question, guys. Right? So, tingnan natin, ha? Paano natin ito isasolve? So, naalala nyo yung formula nung characteristic impedance sa free space, yung ZO ng free space. So, yung ZO ng free space is given by what? Square root of uh, mu O uh, I mean, tama, mu O over epsilon O. Ayan. Now, guys, this is for free space. So, what do you think will change kung wala na tayo sa free space? So, kung wala ka sa free space, guys, ang magbabago, syempre, is ito. ba? Kasi magkakaroon ng dielectric. So, magkakaroon ng ER. Correct? Ayan, no? So, pag minanipulate natin tong formula natin, we have uh, ZO is equal sa... Uh, actually, uh, we have square root. I mean, ito pala, guys. What's this? What's the value of this? Ano pong value nito? Yung square root ng mu over EO. Ito nga yung sinasabi ko, no? The value of that is 377. Okay? So, or approximately 120 pi. So, we have 120 pi, okay, divided by square root of ER. Ayan. So, ito yung formula natin, guys. No? Formula na to. Kailan ginagamit yung formula na yan, sir? So, we, will, uh, we use this uh, formula kapag ka yung hinahanap natin is characteristic impedance na hindi nakalagay sa free space. Alright? So, intrinsic characteristic impedance in a polyethylene dielectric material. So, anong makukuha? So, we have uh, 120 pi. Okay, divided by what? Divided by square root ng 2.27. Alright? So, what is our ZO, guys, if that's the case? Okay, so, 250.224 ohms. Or 22. O, 2 na lang, no? Ohms. Alright? Okay. So, ganun lang, ha? Ganun lang po. Okay, so let's proceed. Now let's talk about okay, let's talk about the ano no, uh, power density. Okay, so what uh, what's what what is the power? Ano sabi ng power density? So this refers okay to the rate at which energy flows through a unit area of surface in space. Okay, 
Uh, and the power density, guys, no, is related to what we call as the inverse square law. Okay, so before discussing this, no, uh, do you remember uh, the transmission impairments that we have discussed? Diba? Diba apat yon. So the first one there is the attenuation. Ano nga uling ano guys? Uh, attenuation. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng attenuation? Can someone uh, uh, recite? Ano ba ang uh, attenuation? So what is uh, attenuation guys? Nare-recall pa? Mm. May kinala mo ba sa power density? Yes, actually. Okay, no? So, uh, at innovation, yan, uh, this is basically the loss in signal energy. Okay? Actually, hindi yung signal na nawawala, no? but rather yung energy niya. Alright? So, the loss of the signal energy, no, as it travels farther away from the source. Okay? Nagagets? So, buwababa yung energy level ng signal natin habang palayo siya ng palayo ng source. Okay? Uh, remember that at innovation, this is not caused by, uh, for example, may, may obstruction or merong uh, may humarang sa signal mo, something like that. Hindi ganun eh. Uh, the at innovation is basically uh, namamatay lang naturally no, yung iyong signal as it travels farther away from the source. Now, the question is why? Bakit? No? So, this is because of the power density, the concept of power density and the inverse square law. So, inverse square law, this states that the power density is inversely proportional to the square of distance from the source. So, here's a good illustration no, of what happens no, uh, in the inverse square law. So, sabihin natin guys no, na yung signal natin, ito yung signal natin, di ba, uh, is composed of nine energy particles. No? Sabihin natin na yung buong energy ng signal mo is composed of nine particles. Syempre hindi naman ganoon in reality, no. Kumbaga visual uh, representation lang 'to. Na yung signal mo, okay, nine energy particles ang lakas niya. Now, given a certain distance, uh, let's say that you have this uh, area. So pag nandito ka, no, you're able to capture all the nine energy particles of your signal. Nagagets? But because of the inverse square law, no, as the energy particles travel farther away from the source, hindi sila nawawala. Pero bakit nagkakaroon ng loss ng signal energy? It's because they are spreading. Okay? So another term actually ng inverse square law is the spreading loss. So bakit siya nag spread Iyon yung tendency niya. Ganun talaga siya in nature. So as it moves farther away from the source, no, they will tend to spread from one another, the energy particles. Now, if you have the same area, okay, na pang-capture mo, ang mangyayari guys, so pagka ang distance mo ay 2R na, tatlong energy particles na lang ang maka-capture mo. Kasi nga, they are spread apart. And if you move another uh, certain distance, no, so 3R na, so 3 times na ng original link, ang maka-capture mo, isa na lang. Diba? Because they are spreading apart. Okay? So, pag mas lumayo pa ito, no, there's a tendency no, na uh, isang energy particle lang din yung makapture. Or halos wala ka na makapture na energy particle. Kasi they are spreading. Okay? So, yun ang nangyayari. Dahil kaya tayo merong attenuation. What happens is the energy, uh, the your signal actually nag spread siya as it travels farther away from the source. Okay, guys? So, nauunawaan po. So if you if na gets nyo, no, what do you think is the solution for this one? How can we uh, overcome this based dun sa uh, and explain natin? Kasi di ba nung malapit ka nine na energy particles yung na capture mo, so buong power di ba nakuha mo lahat. But as but but as you move farther away from the source, no, the energy particles tend to sp uh, spread from one another. So, konti na lang yung nakukuha mo, no? Ito nga, di ba? From 9, naging 3, naging 1 na lang. So, what do you think is the, the solution for that? No? Tingin nyo, ano kaya ang pwede natin gawing solution na kahit malayo tayo, no? Uh, we will still be able to... Uh... Okay. So, we have this answer, no? Papataasin yung power density. Alright. Uh, if... Okay. That is correct. Okay, that is correct. Tama din naman, no? O kaya lang, uh, the problem is, if pat, pat, pataasin natin to, no? Pag pinataas yung power density, what will happen is dadami yung energy particles. 
Okay? Energy particles. So, ibig sabihin, kunyari, dito, instead of 9, magiging 18 energy particles. So, pa mas lumayo ka, o, oh, di yung 18 magiging, ah, yung dating 3 magiging 6, tapos yung dating 1 magiging 2. But at the end of the day, okay, uh, meron pa mga energy particle ang hindi mo na-capture. You get the point? So, even if you increase the power density, okay, even if you increase the power density, ang mangyayari is there are a lot of energy na hindi mo pa rin maka-capture. Nagets po? Mas better siya dito, dun sa dito, sa nangyari, sa current uh, problem natin, but hindi mo pa rin na-solve yung ano, no, problem uh, about the uh, spreading. So, we have another answer here. Shorter distance or amplification. Mm, amplification, uh, ano yung amplify Siguro, ano, no, yung amplification na sinasabi dito is yung parang sagot din kanina ni Gideon na tataasan yung power density. Okay, so alam na natin na hindi yun good solution. Shorter distance, of course, that is not a good solution because sa communication, hindi mo na mababago yung distance. Y you get the point? So, kunyari, ito yung transmitter mo, ito yung receiver mo. Hindi mo na pwede adjust yung receiver mo. Ay, hindi kaya, medyo lapitan mo na lang pre. <laughs> Di ba? So, hindi yung solution. Okay, that's the correct answer. The correct answer is you need to increase your Okay, you need to increase your capture area. Okay? Yung pang-capture mo, lakayan mo. So, dito, di ba? Tinan nyo, guys. If you will increase the area of your capture power, okay? Miski malapit o malayo siya, okay, you will be able to capture all the nine energy particles. Nagets nyo? Isipin mo, guys, no? Ito, ito. Dito sa drawing na to, ito yung, ito yung, ito yung magiging size ng pang-capture ko. Ganto kalaki. Yung nasa third one. So, imagine, no? This size... Malapit o malayo siya, you'll be able to capture everything. No? So that's the solution for that. Okay? The solution, of, the solution uh, to battle against at innovation is to increase the capture area. Okay. May sagot dito magdadagdag ng repeater. That is also correct, but that is more advanced solution na. Okay? Yung paggamit ng repeater. Okay? So more advanced solution na yun. The easiest solution is to increase the capture area. But now, the question is, how would you do that? Okay? Because this is only visual. Nagets? Visual lang to eh. Okay, sige, madaling sabihin na laki yung area. But in practical sense, how would you do that? How would you increase the capture area? So to do that, you need to increase the gain of your receiving antenna. Okay? Naiintindihan, guys? Although wala pa tayo sa antenna, no? Wala pa tayo sa antenna. Pero this, uh, to increase the capture area, you need to have a higher gain, no? On your receiving antenna. Okay? So pag mataas ang gain kasi ng receiving antenna, malaki ang capture area niya. So kung malaki ang capture area mo, mababa ang cost ng attenuation. Kasi even if the particles are spread apart, you'll be able to capture everything. Okay? So naiintindihan, guys? All right. So by the way, no, uh, I don't know, no, even though wala pa tayo sa antenna theory, uh, antenna theory hindi na natin siya isa nama no, sa midterm. So antenna theory will be discussed uh, for the finals period, no? So after kasi nito, guys, 'di ba, midterm exam, after ng midterm exam, we're gonna start antenna theory. Then after na antenna theory, we're gonna study microwave. No? Tapos after noon, final exam na. Okay? So ganun. 'Yun yung mga gagawin natin sa the rest of the semester. So, as I was saying, no, uh, although wala pa tayo sa antenna, do you know what's the purpose of an antenna? So, the purpose of an antenna is to convert, okay? An antenna is basically a transducer. So, it is used to convert, okay, electrical current into radio wave or vice versa. So, radio wave to current, current to electric, uh, current to radio wave. No? So, para maging wireless siya, you need an antenna. Because antenna converts no electrical signal into ano, uh, radio wave. Okay? Ayan. So, ngayon, yung power density, may mga formula tayo, guys. No? So, itong una, yung PTGT over 4 pi, as, 4 pi R square, power density. Okay? P dito, guys, no? Hindi ko lang na-edit. Uh, kasi picture siya, eh. So, PD dapat to, ha? P sub D. So, yung power density natin, ito, yung PTGT over 4 pi R square, uh, may kinalaman to, guys, saan? May kinalaman to dun sa definition. Okay? Energy through unit area. So, ito siya. Itong dalawa guys, galing dun sa parang Ohm's law. ba? Kasi naalala nyo guys, you can actually calculate power. You can calculate or solve for power. Anong formula ng power? I square R o kaya V square over R. 
So by uh, analogy or by correspondence, you can actually calculate the power density using the electric field. No, Square mo lang siya over 377 o yung magnetic field intensity, square mo lang multiplied by 377. Uh, nga lang, itong dalawa na to, itong dalawang formula na to, these are not absolute formula. Uh, this is only true if you if your wave is traveling in free space. But in the event that uh, our transverse electromagnetic wave is not in free space, uh, hindi na 377 yung impedance natin. So kung whichever, kung ano may maging impedance based dun sa nakalculate natin, ayun yung gagamitin. But in most cases, guys, no, in most cases, ito yung value, 377. Ngayon, uh, we can also calculate for the electric field intensity or field strength. No, So another term natin is field strength. So basically, this is the amount of voltage that will be induced by an electromagnetic wave at a specific location. So ito yung formula niya, guys. Itong formula na to, galing lang to dito. Ayan, galing lang dyan. Ito, bale yung square root ng 30 PTGT over D na derived lang siya from the power density. Okay. So, yan. Ito yung ating uh, equation no, for the electric field intensity or the field strength. Hi right, guys? Right. So, I think we can uh, solve a problem with regards to this one. So, solve tayo. Okay. So, an antenna with a gain of 2.15 decibel is used to transmit 100 watts of power to a receiving station 10 kilometers away. So, calculate the power density at the receiving station. Okay, so madali lang tong A, no? May formula lang tayo para sa part A. So, game. So, part A tayo, guys, no? Power density, okay, I equal saan, guys? PTGT, di ba? So, 100 watts. Okay, GT is the gain of the transmitting antenna, 2.15 decibels. So, huwag magkakamali, ah, dapat naka-absolute po ito. Kaya, ah, dapat gagawin natin siyang 10 raised to 2.15 divided by 10. Bawal kasing naka-decibel yun. Right? Divided by 4 pi, tapos yung distance. Ano ba yung distance? 10 kilometers away. Yan. Tapos square. Alright guys? So what's the formula for the power density? Ay, what's the answer for the power density? Pakicompute lang, bali 100 times 10 raised to 2.15 divided by 10 over 4 pi r square. 4 pi times 10 to the 10 times 10 to the 3 cube uh, square. So by the way, ang unit is ano no, uh, what per square meter. So we have 79 point, what's that? 5577 nano watts per square meter. Tama ba? So pakiverify na lang guys no. Ubot magkaiba. Ano ba talaga? Sige, paki-compute na lang, guys. Okay, so uh, tama yung ano no, 0. Point. Baka may nagkamali lang si Dexter, no? 131 times 10 uh, tapos what's that? But 10 to the 6. 130.554. Okay. So 130 0.544 nanowatts per square meter. Okay, guys. So, naiintindihan, guys? Okay. So, next natin is, ano, letter B, electric field intensity at the receiving station. So, how can we solve for that, no? Electric field intensity. So, may formula lang din tayo, no? Sa electric field intensity, this is simply equal sa square root ng 30 pt 100 GT, 10 raised to 2.15, divide by 10. Okay, over distance na 10 kilometers. Okay, so what will be our uh, field strength? So ito naman, volts per meter naman to. Volts per meter naman ang unit ng electric field intensity. Okay. 
So we have 7.02 millivolts per meter. Okay. Okay, let us see magnetic field intensity. So, how can we solve for the magnetic field intensity? So, what's the easiest uh, solution? Wala tayong direct formula kasi, guys, ng magnetic field intensity. So, how can we get uh, the H? Tingin nyo, guys. So, we don't have uh, a, a way to directly compute for H. So, what do you think is the best way to solve for H in this case? Okay, pwede naman yun, yung 377 H square. Pero mas madali yung ano, no? Uh, pwede naman yun, ha? Yung galing sa power density equals 377 uh, times H square. That's also good. Uh, but the easiest way is what? The easiest way uh, to solve for the power density. Di ba may formula tayo? Yes, the intrinsic characteristic impedance. So that is E over H, di ba? Ayan. So yung zeo natin, pag walang sinabi, 377 or 120 pi. Tapos yung E natin is uh, 7.02 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, over H. So therefore, ano yung H natin? Okay. Yan. So that's the easiest way to solve it. To solve for uh, H, no? Although pwede rin naman yung may 377. Yung dadaan ka sa power density. So that's also okay. So you will be arriving at almost uh, the same answer. So what is H, guys, if that's the case? Bali, 7.02 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 377. Anong makukuha? Okay, so we have 18.62. Anong unit nito, guys? Ampere per meter to. So, microampere per meter. And finally, guys, no, letter D. Ito may formula to, no? So, hinahanap yung power received. So, yung power received or the captured power, okay, ay equal dun sa power density multiplied by the effective area. Ayan, no? So, babalikan natin to, guys, no? Pag nasa antenna system na tayo. So, wag pong kakalimutan tong equation na to. No? So, yung capture power, P cap, is equal sa power density, okay, multiplied by the effective area. So, in this case, uh, power density natin, di ba, may value tayo, 130, okay, 0.554, okay, multiplied by, I mean, uh, nanowatts per square meter, multiplied by 5 square meter. Okay? So, ano pong makukuha, guys, pagkaganyan? What is our captured power? So, ano yung captured power natin? Multiply nyo lang, bale. Okay, we have 652.77 nanowatts. All right. So nice good, nice good. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the you know, no, uh, optical properties ng radio wave. So uh, we as we all know guys, no, uh, the light, okay, yung light mismo, no, which we studied last time when we studied the optical fibers. Okay, so yung light is a transverse electromagnetic wave or technically a radio wave. So, ibig sabihin guys, no, yung mga properties ng light is also present no pagdating natin sa radio wave. So, here's the optical properties ng radio wave. So, number one is refraction. Again guys, ha, ang refraction is bending but it is because, okay, of the uh, difference in the ano no, in the medium. Okay? Because uh the radio wave no travels faster no from one medium to another. Depende sa medium mo yung speed ng radio wave kasi natin. Okay? Ah, wait lang guys ah.
Okay, guys. Sorry, uh, sorry for that. Alright, so game, let's uh, continue. So again, uh, uh, the ano, no, the uh, bending no, of the uh, radio wave uh, here is because of the difference in the speed, no? but hindi siya nagbe-bend talaga. Hindi siya binibend, ha? So iba kasi yon. Mamaya pag-uusapan natin, paano pag na-bend mismo yung radio wave natin? Yung bending is because of the difference of the speed. Okay? So bakit magkaiba yung speed sa magkaibang medium? Dito papasok yung tinatawag nating index of refraction. So yung index of refraction, ang formula niya is uh, N equals C over B. Okay? So, bale, uh, as you can see here, no, the velocity of propagation on the medium is controlled by the value of your index of refraction. Okay? Now, actually, uh, yung ating index of refraction is related to the uh, velocity, uh, to the dielectric constant. So, depende dun sa material, iba yung kanyang corresponding index of refraction. Alright? Okay. Uh, sige, next. Uh, let's try to uh, solve a uh, problem here. Okay, game. So, uh, medium 1 is made of uh, silicon and medium 2 is made of glass. Their relative permittivity are 11.83 and 3.66 respectively. So, for an angle of refraction of 60 degrees, determine, yan, a, the index of refraction of medium 1, B, the velocity factor of medium 2, C, the incidence angle, and D, the angle of reflection. Okay, so game, let's do this. Okay, so uh, ito, direct substitution lang sa formula, di ba? Uh, meron tayong uh, dielectric constant ng medium 1 and dielectric constant ng medium 2. So let's just get uh, N1. So ano formula ng N1, guys? Sa so, square root daw nito, no? square root ng uh, 11.83. Okay, sige nga guys, pakisolve nga. What is N1? Okay, we have 3.439. Alright, and then uh, we have uh, B, velocity factor of medium 2. So, yung uh, as you can see, no? uh, naalala nyo pa yung velocity factor. So, velocity factor is simply equal sa 1 over square root of ER. Okay, so, kung velocity factor 2, ER2. So, we have uh, 1 over square root na, ano yung ER2 natin? We have 3.66. Okay, so we have VF2. Okay, we have zero point five two three. Okay, next. So letter C. Okay, incidence angle. So dito gagamitin natin si Snell's law. Okay, so anong formula ng Snell's law na alala? So we have n one sine uh, theta one. Okay, uh, is equal sa uh, n two uh, sine theta two. Alright? So, ano yung N1 natin, guys? No? So, na-compete naman, no? Oh, so, di, uh, compete din pa rin natin yung, ano, yung N2, although hindi naman siya kailangan right now. Kasi gagamitin natin siya sa pagsosolve nung uh, angle of incidence. So, square root lang natin si 3.66. So, ano muna makakuha, guys? If we get uh, square root of 3.66. Okay, we have uh, 1.913. Alright. So, gamit nat gamitin natin dito. So, we have uh, 3.439. Okay, sign ng theta 1. Okay, ano yung theta 1 natin? So, that's, uh, yun yung hindi natin alam. Alright. I equal sa N2, which is uh, 1.913. Okay, sign ng theta 2. So, yung sign ng theta 2, guys, is 60 degrees. Uh, kasi yung theta 2, yung refraction yun, guys, eh. No? Yung uh, theta 1, yung incidence. So, what is theta 1? So, pag sinolve nyo yung uh, theta 1, uh, don't uh, use the solve function. You just solve it manually, no? So, madali lang naman. 1.913 times sine 60 divided by 3.439 and then you get the arc sine. Okay, so we have 26 point. Oh, but malina naman yung kay ano. 
Baka anong nga sa calculator mo, Dexter, puro mali yung sagot mo. 28 point? Okay, 28.8 degrees. Alright? Hi, guys. Alright. Uh, how about the angle of reflection no, para sa letter D? So, angle of reflection, uh, may formula lang yun, guys. No? Yung angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. Okay? So, kung ito ay Snell's law, this one naman is the law of reflection. Okay? So, what is the angle of reflection now, guys? Kung ano to? 28.8 din. Okay? So, naiintindihan po? Maliwa na, guys? Nakuha naman? Yes? Okay. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, so reflection guys, no? So nabanggit na natin to kanina. So uh, reflection is basically uh, what's happening if uh, the signal doesn't enter the second medium, no? So pan nagba-bounce lang siya. Okay? So we have different types of reflection. So we have diffuse reflection. So this is uh, the reflection at irregular and rough surfaces. Okay, we also have the specular reflection naman. It is the reflection in a uh, smooth surface. By very smooth surfaces. So, that is a mirror-like reflection. Now, kapag yung surface mo is not very rough and not very smooth on the other hand, so, ang tawag niya or in term natin sa kanya ay semi-rough surface, so, the Rayleigh criterion would actually determine if your uh, signal will reflect as if it was uh, ano, no? as if it was a smooth surface. So, the Rayleigh criterion this states that a semi-rough surface will reflect as if it were a smooth surface if the cosine of the angle of incidence is greater than lambda over 8D. Okay, guys? Ayan. Okay, ito na yung sinasabi ko, guys. Okay? Uh, Di ba, I've, ano, no, I've uh, reiterated no, from the previous uh, slide na yung refraction is bending ng radio wave because of the change in speed that occurs when it enters one medium to another medium. Kung magkaiba kasi yung index of refra uh, kung magkaiba kasi yung index of refraction noon, magkaiba yung speed nila doon, no? So sa dalawang medium na yon. So magbe-bend because of that. But if your signal will bend because of an obstacle, okay, like this one, this refers to the redistribution of energy. So when say redistribution bending, okay, within a wave front when it passes near the edge of an opaque object or an obstacle, Okay, while well, allowing secondary waves to sneak around the corner of an obstacle. Okay? So, we call that as diffraction. Okay? Diffraction. Alright? So, if your uh, radio wave will actually bend because of an obstacle, so that is called diffraction. No? So, iba yung bending uh, because of refraction. Okay? Iba sa diffraction. Now, guys, if your signal will diffract, Okay, according to Huygens principle, this states that any point on a wavefront of light may be regarded as the source of a secondary wave. Okay, look at this one. So let's say, guys, na ito yung ating obstruction, guys. So, ah, hindi kano to dapat yung ichura na mga yare, de ba? So if this is your wave and meron kang obstacle and then meron ka lang malit na opening, ang assumption natin dapat isang derecho lang yung signal mo, de ba? Kasi na block yung ibang part niya. Tapos may nakalusot na ganyan. But according sa Hygis principle, if that will be the case, that small opening would serve as the source of the secondary wave. So magiging source ng wave yun. Okay guys? So even if na-block natin yung ibang, ano, yung ibang part ng signal natin, yung part na na-diffract guys will serve no, as a source of a secondary wave. And that is Hygis principle. Okay? And that idea or that property of radio wave uh, is very important, especially in wireless communication. Why? Okay. Have you ever wondered, guys, no? Uh, bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng ano, no? Uh, signal. 
no ng mga mobile yung mga mobile phones natin no so bakit mayroong signal sa loob ng bahay natin kasi di ba uh, are the waves no from the ano are the waves from the uh, cell sites can penetrate the walls of our house nakaka penetrate ba ng uh, walls yung radio wave na galing dun sa uh, mga cell towers the answer is no no hindi na nakaka penetrate ng mga walls natin pero bakit mayroong signal ba din sa loob ng bahay natin no so uh, it is because of the hygiene principle syempre yung mga bahay naman natin guys may mga openings no like windows gaps in the door di ba may mga opening na may bahay natin pag pumasok doon yung signal natin guys it will become a secondary source na imagine nyo, kaya may uh, in your house may small opening. Pag pumasok yung radio wave doon, hindi yun parang laser na isang diretso lang. Once the wave enters there, syempre madidefract yun no kasi nga may obstacle, it will become a source of a secondary wave. Naintindihan guys? So ibig sabihin guys no kapag ka totally enclosed no yung area, as in wala talagang ano no, close talaga siya. Okay, hindi makaka-penetrate ang radio wave doon. That's the time na uh, mawawala ng signal no kapag na ka sa enclosed area. Okay, sir, nagets ko na. Uh, but bakit sir, no? What's the explanation why uh, in some area, okay, in our house, okay? Yeah, that's why sa elevators, 'di ba? They are totally enclosed, right? So, uh, mahina yung signal kasi konti lang na kapasok or halos wala, no? Because uh yun nga, totally enclosed siya. Well, anyway, uh, as I was saying, bakit sir sa bahay namin may mga area o may mga spot na walang signal kung nagde-defract naman pala yung signal? Di ba? Kasi pag nag-defract, magiging secondary wave yun. Okay? Have you ever thought about that? Okay, so bakit sir ganun pala? Minsan sa bahay namin, uh, may area na walang uh, signal. Ano po nangyayari doon? So, hindi to sa loob ng bahay, no? pero same principle happens. Okay? So, for example, uh, ito yung may, may bundok tayo dito, guys. And uh, let's say, guys, that uh, this is our original signal. Okay. So, it will hit the mountain. So, ang mangyari, dahil, ma dahil may obstacle dito, magiging ano siya, magiging panibagong source siya ng signal natin. Naintindihan? Kaya na nag-defract dito. So, magiging panibagong source yun, no? So, kahit ang drawing ko, no? Medyo gandaan ko. Ayan, magiging panibagong uh, source siya ng signal. Okay? However, no? Doon sa area, immediately below, kung saan siya nag-defract, hindi aabot yung signal doon. Kasi doon pala siya nag-start, eh. Nag-gets nyo? So, this area is called as the shadow zone. Okay? So, ibig sabihin guys, no, kapag ka may area kung saan doon pa lang nag-defract, doon pa lang yung panigbagong source, the area directly below it will not receive any signal. Naintindihan po? Ayun, that's the reason. no? Kaya may mga dead spots tayo, may mga area na walang signal because it is a shadow zone. Okay? And the shadow zone, <laughs> ayan, no? so nanggugulo yung pusa namin. Sumasampan ng ano? Ayan. So, ayan, shadow zone is the ano no, uh, is the area directly below kung saan siya nag-defract. Okay guys? Nagigets ba? Nakakuha po? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Uh, one evidence no ng diffraction is something like this. Uh, in a dark room, so kanya rin totally dark room and then you open the door. So pag inopen natin yung uh, door natin guys no, ang ang mangyayari is, di ba, kung hindi siya nagde-defract, dapat kung ito yung ilaw, isang diretso lang yung liwanag. Pero bakit parang ano, no? nag spread siya mula doon sa door. Eh, no, di ba? nag spread siya, nakikita nyo. So, it's because nagde-defract siya and it becomes a source of a secondary wave. So, this is the uh, parang easy proof no, that we can see na there is a hygiene principle, uh, na the hygiene principle is true. Okay? Naintindihan, guys? Alright. Okay. Now, let's talk about uh, interference. no. So, this is the last one na uh, under the uh, optical property ng radio wave. So, ano yung interference? No? So, this occurs when two waves that left one source and traveled by different paths arrive at a point. So, 
uh, for example, no, di ba sabi nga natin, kahit na diretsyo, no, yung ating signal, nag spread yan eh. So, there are some particles na pwedeng, kunyari, meron kang body of water doon, magre-reflect. Okay, so, pag nag-reflect siya, okay, it is the same signal that will arrive, no, at your receiver. So, question guys, no, uh, if that happens, no, kunyari, uh, meron kang signal na galing sa reflected path, pumunta doon sa, ano mo, pumunta doon sa receiver mo, na-receive din ng receiver. Kasi kung hindi siya nag-reflect, di naman siya mare-receive ng receiver, di ba? Eh, dahil nag-reflect siya, na-receive din ng receiver tong signal na to. So, what do you think will happen dun sa uh, signal natin? I mean, dun sa receiver natin. Ano mangyayari dun sa original signal mo? Will it be uh, strengthened or will it be weakened by the reflected signal? Kasi imagine guys, no, kunyari ang, ang ground mo hindi river, kunyari rough surface yan. So, pag rough surface, magdi-diffuse eh. Di ba? So, pag rough surface, magdi-diffuse. So, hindi talaga siya intended na ma-receive ng receiver. But if there's a body of water there, so it will reflect, di ba? Because bodies of water is uh, reflective. So, nag-reflect siya. So, yung signal na ito, na-receive din ng receiver natin. It is the same signal basically because it came from the transmitter. So, my question is, what do you think will happen to your original signal? Will it be strengthened or will it be weakened? Okay, strengthened. Okay. How uh, about the others? What do you think? Okay, strengthened. How about the others? What do you think will happen? No, uh, if that's the case. Hmm. Mapapalakas ba o mapapahina yung original signal mo kapag merong nag-reflect? Okay, may weekend. Okay, so last one, last one. Tingnan natin kung ano ang majority na answer ng 3B. So tingin nyo guys, what will happen? Okay, weekend. So tie. So we are tied, no? So what's the answer? Okay, so okay. Uh, ganito yan guys eh. Yung concept na to, okay, Ayan, no? So, may sagot si Bieber. Depende daw, no? Kung constructive or destructive. That's the other term sa question ko, no? So, pag strengthen, constructive. Kapag weekend, destructive. Okay? So, another term, no? So, yun yung sagot ni Bieber, no? Ayan. Pero, actually, uh, actually, ganito. Yung concept na to, guys, uh, can be, ano, no? Uh, can be uh, used in both ways. Uh, it can be used in redundancy. Okay? Redundancy, uh, pag-aaralan natin yung sa microwave, kasi kung isa lang ang path mo, there's a chance for your path to fail. So that's why, guys, we actually use a redundant path. Okay? I mean, yun din, same signal, pero ibang path. Uh, for the sake na, uh, in case na mag-fail yung isang link, meron ka pang isa. Okay? Kaya lang, in this specific question, guys, no, what will happen? In this specific question, the signal will be weakened. Why? Dahil nag-reflect siya. Kasi guys, pag nag-reflect siya, automatic yung signal mo magkakano ng 180 degrees phase shift. Okay? Magkakano ng 180 degrees phase shift yan. So kung nagkano ng 180 degrees phase shift, your signal will be negative. For example. Tapos, eto positive. So magkakano sila ng uh, out-of-phase interaction. So ito nga, magiging destructive. So, mawi-weekend yung original signal mo. Okay, guys? Mawi-weekend yung original signal natin. Naintindihan? Because of reflection. Okay. Ano yung evidence nito? Uh, sino pa sa inyo, guys, uh, yung may television set sa bahay na ang means of uh, communication is antena? Sino pa yung naka-antena sa bahay? Antena yung mga television. Yan, yeah, no? Oh, ka ka kasi kami ngayon, ano na, na-cable na kami ngayon. So, hindi na applicable sa amin to, no? Pero sino sa inyo, guys? Ay uh, yung sa bahay nyo, ay uh, yung mga television set nyo is naka ano pa, naka-antenna pa. Yung sa antenna siya kumukuha ng signal. Yan. Kasi nung ba nung college ako, no, nung kasing edad niya ako, guys, ganun. Ganun yung ganun yung TV namin eh, no? Di antenna pa kami. So, meron ba sa inyo na naka-antenna pa sa bahay o lahat kayo na cable TV na? Wala. Naku, mukhang ano na. Mukhang wala ah. Wala, wala guys. Let's kayo naka ano na. Naka cable television na. Mm -hmm. 
wala nang naka ano, naka-antena sa inyo. O kahit na hindi pa kayo naka uh, I mean nakaranas man lang no na ang television ay antena. Meron ba? O wala din. Ito pala mahirap no kapag ka yung mga estudyante ay ano na no mga uh, ano na mga mayayaman no. <laughs> Yan joke lang. Okay, ayan ayan. So meron namang mga naka-antenna before, no? So ngayon naka-cable TV na kasi sila. All right. So what it, how's your reception no during rainy days? How's your reception guys no sa television kapag maulan? Do you remember? Ano yung reception niyo sa television guys kapag maulan? Kasi umuulan. Kaya Anong napapansin niyo na reception? Okay, lumalabo. Okay. Yan kina Mr. Abelara antena. So pag maulan Mr. Abelara no, oh, anong nangyayari sa reception nyo? Actually ano no, uh, yan no. So pag umuulan kasi guys, okay pag umuulan, ibig sabihin yung galing sa mga droplets ng rain, nagre-reflect ang signal mo. Gets? Kaya may droplets ng rain ka, nagre-reflect doon. Nawiwiken yung signal na nare-receive mo. Okay? And that is also the reason with this one. Okay na ano, sa mga ano no, sa mga, mga kung nare-recall nyo pa guys, kapag maulan, usually yung television natin ganto ang nangyayari. So napansin niyo guys no, look at the rugby player. So nakita niyo dito parang ano guys no, merong part nung rugby player dito na parang naiwan. Nakita niyo guys, ayan no. Ito yung ano niya, shoulder niya, ito yung siko niya, ayan ito yung uh, leg legs thighs niya. Nakita niyo guys? Na, 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 na imagine nyo. So, it's because of the reflected path. ba? Diba? So, may reflection na naganap. So, ang nangyari is uh, parang meron kang same image na na-form, na mas delayed, tapos mas mahina, mas malabo. ba? Diba? Ganun ang nangyari. So, nagkaroon siya ng reflection. Okay? Ano tawag natin doon? Ang tawag natin dito, guys, ay ghost image. Or the process is ghosting. Ayan, no? So, ghosting yung tawag natin dito. Okay? So, kasi mga kabataan ngayon, ibang ghosting na yung alam eh, no? So, nung time ko, ito ang ibig sabihin ng ghosting. Okay? So, ghosting is the ghost image, no? Na napoform sa television set natin because of the multipath reflection. Okay? Nangyari ito pag maulan most of the time. Kasi nga, uh, yung signal natin nagre-reflect from the droplets of the rain, from the puddle na nabubuo sa mga kalsada, so and so forth. Okay? Ang tawag natin dito is ghosting. Okay, guys? Okay. So, yan. Optical property ng radio wave. So, you know, yun na guys, no? Yung mga ano natin, yung mga uh, optical properties ng radio wave. So, now we can proceed, no, dun saan? Sa radio frequency spectrum. Okay? So, what is the radio frequency spectrum? Uh, there's nothing to discuss with this one, guys. Uh, may memorize nyo lang to, no? So, dapat alam nyo kung ano, ano yung... Uh, Anong frequency siya kapag sinabing high frequency? Anong frequency kapag anong, ab, ano yun? Ano yung ITU ba given a certain range of frequency? Okay? So, pero hindi, hindi lahat ito guys ay ginagamit natin sa wireless communication. Ano yung ginagamit natin sa wireless communication? Ito guys, no? Yan. Yung VLF, LF, tsaka MF. We use this for ground wave propagation. Okay? So yung BLF, LF, tsaka MF, ginagamit natin to, no, sa ground wave propagation. This one guys, yung nasa ano, yung kulay red, we use this naman for sky wave propagation and the remaining guys is ginagamit naman natin sa space wave propagation, no? So depende dun sa radio frequency spectrum guys, yung pwede nating gamitin sa wireless. So mula BLF hanggang EHF, we can use them in wireless. Pero iba-iba uh, yung mode of propagation ng bawat isa. Okay? So, meron tayo, for v uh, meron tayo for ground wave propagation, meron tayo for sky wave propagation, at meron tayo for ano, space wave propagation. Okay? Ano-ano ba yung mga pinagba pinagsasabi ko? Ito yun, guys. Ito yung iba't-ibang modes of wave propagation. So, pag sinabing wireless... Ano-ano yung iba't ibang ano natin, no? Wireless communication. Alright, guys? Okay, so isa-isahin natin yan. Okay, let's start with ground wave propagation. By the name itself, ground wave, okay? Ibig sabihin, ginagamit niya ang guide yung earth surface. So, kumbaga, ang path ng ground, 
So, yun yung trajectory ng ano no, ng ground wave propagation. Nagets ba? Okay. Ah, uh, st still wireless, no? It's uh, still wireless, guys. Pero yung contour ng Earth, yung sinusundan niya. Okay? So, sabi rito, ano pa yung additional info natin? Uh, the frequency, the maximum frequency that we can use in this application is 2 megahertz and uh vertically ano guys, no? Vertically uh, polarized yung ano natin, no? Yung uh, antenna and the signal as well. Okay? So, yung mga nandito guys, uh, you just read them. Okay? Uh, Self-explanatory na may mga yan. Okay. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, no? if it follows the ground, so the idea about the ground propagation, that is very good, no? Because it can travel uh, very far distances. Kaya lang, the limitation is the type of the ground na meron tayo. Okay? So, halimbawa, guys, no? Uh, uh, ground propagation, kung ang ground na ginagamit natin as a guide is, kunyari, seawater, loamy soil, rocky terrain, ayan, ayan, mga ganyan, good, fair, fair siya. Okay? Pero kunyari, guys, gagamit ka, dadaan na siya ng rocky terrain, no? mga bundok, parang ganun. O kaya desert, ayan. O kaya jungle, no? So, <laughs> talagang jungle, eh, no? <laughs> yeah, no? So, unusable na siya in the, if that's the case. Okay? By the way, this is the uh, illustration of the ground wave propagation. Okay? Ayan. And I don't know if you can see, no, na as it travels farther away from the source, what happens is nagtitilt yung ground wave natin. So, parang, di ba, parang dito nakalean back pa siya. But as it travels farther away from the source, no, it moves or tilts forward. Okay? So, and eventually, guys, no, the ground wave will disappear kapag totally tilted na siya towards the ground. So, may limitation yung ground wave natin. Alright? So, uh, another thing about the ground wave, ayan, so nasabi ko na, di ba, about the tilting. As the ground wave moves farther away from the source, it can experience tilting and eventually disappear. So, eto, nabanggit ko na ito kanina, guys, di ba, effective siya sa VLF, LF, tsaka MF frequency bands. Tapos, this one is commonly used, no, in AM radio broadcasting. Okay? Uh, one thing also na hindi nakalagay dito is that the power... Okay, that is required no to facilitate a ground wave propagation is very high. So yung power requirement niya mataas, usually nasa kilowatts. Okay? Ah, uh, kabalik na rin yan guys nung space wave which we will study later. Ang space wave very minimum, uh, I mean very small ang power requirement, usually nasa watts lang. 1 watt, 2 watts, ayan ganun lang. Ito napakalaking power ang kailangan, usually nasa kilowatts range. No? So, yun yung uh, isa pang tatandaan nyo about the ground wave propagation. So, anyway, let's answer this. Considering ground wave propagation, uh, what will be the uh, induced uh, voltage no? uh, on a receiver antenna with a height of lambda over 4, okay, operating frequency of 2 MHz, if a 125 meter transmitting antenna okay, has an RMS current of 8 amperes? Assume the distance between the two antenna is 20 kilometers. So, ang tanong dito is field strength lang, no? Di ba may formula tayo sa field strength? Yung square root ng 30 PTGT. Okay, so uh, hindi natin gagamitin yon. Iba yung formula ng electric field strength sa ground wave. Though, ang tanong pala, sorry guys, no apologies, ang tanong pala dito is induced voltage. Okay, induced voltage. Uh, ang formula ng induced voltage, okay, ay equal lang guys sa ano, no, length of the receiving antenna Okay, length of the uh, receiving antenna multiplied by the electric field intensity. So, still, we need to calculate the electric field intensity bago natin sa substitute dito sa very simple formula na to. Okay, so ano formula ng electric field intensity, guys? Hindi to square root ng 30 PTGT, medyo iba siya. So, this is uh, 120 pi. Okay, may kinalaman na yung height ng antenna. Height ng transmitting antenna, height ng receiving antenna, Okay. Okay, actually hindi receiving no, but rather transmitting lang. Okay, multiplied by the current. Okay, divided by lambda d square. Okay? So that's the uh lambda d lang pala, sorry, kamali pa. <laughs> Over lambda d, no? So that's the formula for the ano, no? Uh, for the electric field strength. Okay?
Okay, guys. Game. So, we have uh, 120 pi. Tapos, height ng transmitting antenna. Actually, given naman. 125. Uh, multiplied by i, which is 8 in this case. Divide by lambda. Lambda is frequency. I mean, wavelength. So, kailangan natin ng frequency. So, frequency is 2 megahertz. 2 times 10 to the 6. Okay, and the distance, 20 kilometers. Sige nga guys, what is E? Uh, what is the uh, electric field strength no, in this case? So, medyo mahaba ng konti yung computation, no? Okay. 0 0.126 volts per meter. That is very large, right? Malaki yan. Kasi usually, ang power density natin nasa millivolts per meter lang, eh. So, as you can see, no, it's, a, it's, it's very large. 0.126 volts per meter. So, paano natin kukunin yung ating uh, induced voltage? So, the induced voltage is simply equal sa length ng receiving antenna. So, according dito, no, yung length ng receiving antenna natin is lambda over 4. So, we just need to get that. 3 times 10 to the 8. Okay, divided by 2 megahertz. Divide by 4. Multiplied by the 0.126. Okay? So, what will be our uh, induced voltage in this case? Ayan, malaki yan, 0.126. Kasi usually, nasa millivolts lang yung compute natin dyan. No? Ayan, kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, guys, no? uh, the power requirement no? for ground wave propagation is very high. So, we have 4.712 uh, volts. Right? Okay. So, ground wave propagation is good, but what do you think is the limitation? So, the limitation of ground wave is pwede lang siya kay VLF, LF, tsaka MF. Uh, these are very low frequency van bands. Mabababa lang to. And most of the applications... To be able to take advantage of the modern communication system, dapat higher frequency tayo. Tama? Dapat higher frequency tayo. So, uh, halimbawa, no, sa, sa television, okay? Ang frequency natin sa television is uh, nasa megahertz range, di ba? Ayan, no? So, eh, megahertz. Ano ba yung megahertz range? Let's go back here. So, eto yun, no? So, nasa pata, eto, very high frequency na siya. So, hindi siya pwede sa, ano, no? Hindi siya pwede sa ground wave. Okay? Usually, sa ground wave, mga AM radio broadcasting. Ano ba yung mga AM radio station na alam nyo? Ano yung mga AM radio station, ano nyo? Mga DC... DC double B? Mga ganun? Ayan, yung mga... Ano ba yung mga ano nun, guys? Yung mga frequency. Di ba nasa kilohertz lang yun? Yung mga sa East 30. Yan, DC double B sa East 30. Yan ba yung 630? I, I, I forgot. But anyway, yung 630, 630, kilohertz lang yun. No? So yung kilohertz, guys, pasok siya sa ground wave. Okay? Gets? So nasa kilohertz range lang yung mga AM radio broadcasting. So, ah, DCMM pala yun, yung 630. 594 kilohertz pala yung DC double B. Well, anyway, so as you can see, guys, no? 630 kilohertz, 594 kilohertz, uh, they are not megahertz. Okay? So, hindi sila pang TV, di ba? Kaya AM radio broadcasting, pasok lang siya dito sa VLF, LF, tsaka MF. Kaya ang ginagamit ng mga yon, ground wave propagation. Alright? So, ang ano kasi, ang bawa, yung FM radio. Ano ba mga sikat sa FM radio na station? Ah... Uh, I forgot, no? Hindi <laughs> ako ikinig ng radyo. Ano ba mga ano, AM radio station, uh, FM radio station? Tarin ko, mama ko. Anong FM radio station, mama? Kaya pa yung ganyan dati. O oh, yun, mga 101 megahertz, di ba? 
Yan, yan, wish 107.5 megahertz. So, megahertz range yan. So, ibig sabihin, hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng, ano, BLF, LF, tsaka MF, no? Yan, so, yan, yes, FM, wish 107.5, yan, megahertz naman yan, guys. So, pag gaganyan, ang ginagamit natin is yung, uh, ano na, uh, sky wave or yung next na space wave. Okay. So, let's have this one guys, no? So the sky wave propagation. So ito naman guys, uh, isang wave, uh, isang band lang yung ginagamit niya, no? Yung HF band lang. Okay? Uh, this is also called the ionospheric propagation. So uh, sa mga ano, no? Sa mga nagba-basketball or nanonood ng basketball, 'di ba sa basketball there is a pass that is called a bounce pass. So bounce pass is yung pinapatalbog yung bola sa floor para ipasa sa teammate. So imagine you guys, no, parang bounce pa siya from transmitter to receiver, pero hindi sa ground but rather sa sky. So na imagine guys, so parang siyang bounce pass pero sa sky. Okay, so parang ganito yung itsura niya. Yan, no? So ang tawag natin dito is the sky wave propagation. It utilizes, no, the ionosphere, no, uh, for its uh, for communication. All right? So this is uh, for me no this is uh, the best okay mode of wave propagation kasi anywhere okay you can actually send and you don't have to worry about any obstruction okay kaya may obstruction na ibon no kaya may ibon na lumilipad guys di naman sila laging ano no naka na lang doon tumamba yung ibon sa langit di ba gumagalaw naman yun so it will eventually uh, move out of the way so you don't have to worry about any obstructions right when using uh, sky wave propagation, you just need to have the ion to reach the ionosphere para mag ano siya, no? para pa, para mag bounce no sa uh, receiver mo. So this is very good. Kaya lang hindi hindi natin to masyadong ginagamit because this is only okay. Uh, this is only uh, shall we say concentrated on the HF band. So, yung HF band, ano lang yung range ng frequency nun, guys? 3 to 30 megahertz lang. So, medyo mababa, di ba? 3 to 30 megahertz lang. Eh, sabi ko nga, yung ibang mga application natin, more than, uh, more than ang kailangan natin, no? Sa range ng HF. So, that's why, even though this is the best uh, mode of propagation, you don't have to worry about any obstructions, no? Uh, and the design is very logical, no? Makikita nyo mamaya, magde-design tayo. Uh, hindi natin ito masyadong ni-utilize because of that. So most of the time pala, sir, space wave ang ginagamit. Yes, no? In most cases, we use the space wave, the third uh, mode of wave propagation. So layers of the atmosphere, so kayo na bahala dito, guys. Ha? You just read this. As well as the layers of the ionosphere. So may lalabas dyan sa exam, so you need to read them. ha? So self-explanatory naman yung mga nakalagay dyan. No? Medyo mayroon pa explain no? yung 30 to 50 by 30 to 55 miles above the earth. Okay? <laughs> ano ba explanation diyan? Wala naman, no? So you just read them, ha? So dito tayo guys sa uh, may concept, the parameters no ng isang ionospheric propagation. Etong mga parameters na to gagamitin natin mamaya in a problem uh, and you can see that we will be able to design a whole system. So let's talk about first the critical frequency. So ano ba si critical frequency? So critical frequency guys, this is the highest, okay? Yung pinakamataas na frequency na kayang i-return no nung ionosphere pabalik sa Earth in a given height. Okay? In a given height, ha? Syempre, kapag mas mataas yung height, mas matagal siyang mare-return. So ibang ibang usapan na 'yon. Okay? So may formula to calculate the critical frequency. But in reality, guys, no, uh, Nmax, it is something that you cannot calculate. I mean, you cannot obtain because this is the electron uh, concentration in the ionosphere. Alam na naman pumunta pa tayo ng ionosphere, guys, no, para i-check. Okay? So, in practical sense, no, we use the process called the ionospheric sounding. Okay? So, what is ionospheric sounding, guys? So, in ionospheric sounding, you have the device called the ionosond. Okay? Ang spelling ng ionosond is this one. Ayan. Ayan spelling, ha? Okay. So, we have device called ionosond. Uh, yung principle niya is the same as the time domain reflectometry. 
natatandaan nyo pa guys the time domain reflectometry from our uh, anong topic ba yun? Uh, transmission lines. Yung pang nagpadala ka ng pulse, you will wait some time tas makakabalik yung pulse. Tas mame-measure mo na kung gaano kalayo yung impairment. So ito sa langit naman, no? So meron kang frequency guys, tapos ipapadala mo siya and then babalik. Okay? So masusukat mo yung time, pag nasukat mo yung time, you will get the distance. Now, if you increase the frequency, okay? Kasi ganito eh. Depende sa ionosphere mo, may range ng frequency na kaya niyang ibalik. I I na gets guys. Hindi siya kunyari ah uh, kung ang frequency mo 7 megahertz tas yung frequency mo 8 megahertz, magkaiba sila ng height, hindi eh, no? So bali depende dun sa ano eh, sa concentration ng ano eh, ng mga electrons sa ionosphere. There's a certain range. Okay? Ibig sabihin yung critical frequency, yung upper range. Gets nyo? So halimbawa, ah uh, yung frequencies na 4 to 6 megahertz, kaya siyang i-return from a height of 110 meters. Parang ganun, guys. So, ibig sabihin, ang critical frequency niya is the, uh, ano ba yung sabi ko? 4 to 8 ba? O 4 to 6? Yung 6 megahertz. Okay, so, enough with that. Ano yung ibig sabihin ngayon ng ionospheric sounding? So, what does ionospheric sounding mean? Kasi hindi mo pa alam, hindi mo ngayon alam ano yung critical frequency mo. So, ang gagawin mo is magpapadala ka ng signal. So, let's say 4 megahertz, bumalik siya with the same time. You use 5 megahertz, bumalik siya at the same time. Tinaasa mo ulit, you use 6 megahertz, bumalik siya at the same time. Then, you use 7 megahertz, no? Bumalik siya, pero mas matagal. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya same height. So, what's your critical frequency? 6 megahertz. Nagets, guys? So, parang ano siya, no? Uh, iterations. So, you will do it, okay? Uh, increment ng frequency uh, one by one until you reach the frequency na hindi na siya bumalik. So, yung frequency na hindi siya bumalik, siyempre, less than nun is the critical frequency. Na gets, guys? So, 4 bumalik, 5 bumalik, 6 bumalik, 7 hindi na bumalik, or bumalik siya pero hindi na same time. So, ibig sabihin, the critical frequency is 6 megahertz. So, that process, guys, is called the ionospheric sounding. Okay? So, you increment the frequency until it ceases back, no? Uh, it, it ceases to be sent back to you. With the same time period. Okay? So that is a critical frequency. So bakit mahalagang malaman ang critical frequency? Because this would be your baseline to uh, calculate your maximum usable frequency. As you know guys, no, uh, critical frequency is useless. Why? Uh, because it is the frequency that can be sent back to you. So walang communication na nangyari doon kasi pinadala mo, oh, mataba ako. Babalik sa'yo, mataba ako. Diba? So, yung pinadala mo, sa'yo din bumalik. Parang nag-text ka sa sarili mo. Parang ganun, guys. No? So, walang, ano, no? walang communication na nangyayari doon. So, that's why no? uh, we only use the critical frequency as our baseline to compute for the maximum usable frequency. Si maximum usable frequency, guys, is the frequency that will be returned down to the earth at a given distance when beam at a specific angle. No? So pag meron na tayong angle, which is the angle of incidence, nakaslant na siya, ano na yung maximum frequency na pwede? So para malaman natin yun guys, gagamit tayo ng, ano, gagamitin nating baseline C si critical frequency. So ito yung formula niya. We have MUF equals FC second theta. Okay guys? Alright. And as I mentioned guys, no, critical frequency is the upper extreme range. So, ibig sabihin, anything lower than that, pero wag naman sobrang baba, is acceptable. The problem kasi, guys, is if you will use no uh, maximum usable frequency and you go beyond the maximum usable frequency, what will happen is magkakaroon tayo ng overshoot. Okay, so what is overshoot? Ano yung overshoot, guys? Okay, so let me uh, demonstrate to you what overshoot means, no? So, kunyari, nag-design tayo ng isang ano, no? Nag-design tayo ng isang... Uh, skywave propagation system. Let's say, guys, na ito yung ionosphere natin. So, pang nag-send ka ng signal pag ganyan, so magbabounce back dito, no? So, sabihin natin, guys, na nandito yung transmitter natin, nandito yung receiver natin. Now, if you go beyond, okay, if your frequency goes above, no, your uh, maximum usable frequency, what will happen, guys, is it will pass that layer or that height 
and it will be bent back by a higher layer. <coughs> if that's the case, guys, no? Pag yan siya na-bend, ang mangyayari, lalagpas ka dun sa target mo. Ang tawag dito is overshoot. Okay? Yan. Wait lang, ha? Okay? So, <clears throat> excuse. So, magkakaroon tayo ng overshoot. Di ba? So, if you go beyond your uh, maximum usable frequency. Kasi maximum usable frequency is based on the critical frequency and that is the extreme limit. So, that's why you need to use a lower frequency. And that is the optimum working frequency. So, optimum working frequency is 15% uh, lower than the MUF. So, that's 0.85 ng MUF. So, this is, ano guys, eh, no? uh, as a safety net in case that there are irregularities in the ionosphere and lumagpas ka dun sa iyong uh, maximum usable frequency. So, the optimum working frequency or the OWF can also be called FOT, uh, which is a French term. Frequency optimum de travail, no? So I don't know if I read that correctly. I'm not a French, no? So, but anyway, uh, that's it. So, Nathan, then, guys. Okay, so, kailangan mas mababa. Kasi range naman yun eh. Okay, kumbaga, kung hindi mo nasakto na ito yung frequency na nagamit, same pa rin yung magiging distance natin pag bumanda siya sa ionosphere. Kasi range naman yung, kaila, range naman siya eh. Kaya lang, wag naman sobrang baba, No? Iba na yon pag sumobrang baba na tayo. Okay? And virtual height, guys, ayun na nga, di ba? Uh, yung process na ionospheric sounding, you'll be able to measure the critical frequency, but you can also measure the virtual height. Kasi magsisend ka ng signal, tas babalik siya sa Earth. Pag tinignan mo yung time na yun, okay, you, will act, you can actually approximate yung part ng ionosphere kung saan siya nag-reflect back. So that is the virtual height. Okay? So, may formula tayo for the virtual height, guys. Uh, but actually, uh, you don't need to use that as long as you understand uh, basic trigonometry. Okay? So, let's have... Uh, oh, sorry. Before solving an example, kasi may example tayo eh. Before doing that, uh, let's talk about skip zone and skip distance. So, yung skip distance muna, mas madaling maintindihan to. Skip distance is the distance between the transmitter and the receiver sa isang skywave propagation. Okay? So, skip distance yun na. Yung term natin, no? Between the distance ng transmitter at ng receiver sa isang skywave propagation. How about the skip zone? Okay. You need an illustration to understand skip zone. Okay. So, uh, imagine that this is your, ano, no? Uh... This is your skyway propagation system. So you have the transmitter and you have the receiver. All right. Meron tayong distance, no? Ano tawag natin dito? That is the skip distance. Using the same distance, you can actually use ground wave, eh. Di ba? So pwede kang gumamit ng ground wave. The problem ng ground wave is it is susceptible to tilting. So, pa nag-tilt siya, sabihin natin na ganyan lang yung coverage ng ground wave mo. Kaya lang, etong area na ngayon na ito, hindi siya about ng, about, hindi siya about ng ground wave, pero masyado siyang mali, ma, malapit for your sky wave. Na gets? So, etong area na to ngayon, ang tawag dito is skip zone. Okay? So, naiintindihan guys? Ayun. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng skip zone. Uh, in a micro, uh, in in a uh, wireless communication system, so it is the area that is outer limit of the ground, ground wave range and the inner edge of the energy of return from the ionosphere. So in other words, hindi siya abot ng ground wave pero masyado siyang malapit for sky wave. Okay? So that is skip zone. Okay? Yeah, skip zone siya. All right? Okay. So here's the problem na na, na mention ko sa inyo, no? So let's go back dun sa ano natin, sa class notebook natin. Okay, no? All right, guys. So game, let's start. 
uh, a radio uh, communication link is to be established via the ionosphere. The maximum virtual height of the layer is 110 kilometers at the midpoint of the path. And the maximum value of the electron density of the ionosphere is 1.8 times 10 to the 6 per uh, cubic centimeter. If the skip distance between the radio stations is 500 kilometers, using flat terrain analysis, yeah, determine blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let us draw first the system. So sabihin natin guys na this is uh, the part of the ionosphere. This is your virtual height, no? Uh, we can call that as our virtual height. And then uh, let's have this one as our ground. Okay, so yung virtual height natin according dun sa uh, problem is 110 kilometers. And it's in the middle of the path. So let's say, guys, that this is your... Uh, bali parang ganyan, no? Yeah. Although hindi siya gitnang gitna, guys, no? Pardon me for the drawing. So let's say that this is uh, the transmitter and this is the receiver. So if that's the case, guys, 500 kilometers yung skip distance. Diba? Naalala nyo, di ba, ang sabi natin, the skip distance is the, is the distance between the transmitter and the receiver. So, since perpendicular tayo, no? Kasi flat yung terrain natin. Yan, 90 degrees ito. So, ibig sabihin mula dito hanggang dito, that's 250 kilometers. Mas mula dito hanggang dito, this is also 250 kilometers. Okay? Nag-gets, guys? Alright. Ngayon, pinapahanap sa atin is the angle of radiation. So, ito siya. Ito yung angle of radiation. Angle of incidence, ito, no? yung galing sa normal. So, this is angle of incidence. Okay. Yan, masusunod natin itong mga to, no? So, game, part A tayo. So, for part A, yan. Uh, how can you solve for theta r? Anong gagamitin natin? Tangent, di ba? Tangent. So, tangent ng theta r, okay, is equal to opposite 110 over the adjacent no, na 250. Okay, so what is theta r? Angle of radiation yung tawag doon. Okay, we have 23.75 degrees. Oh, sa mga trigolords dyan, how can I find theta i? Sige nga, paano ko hahanapin si theta i sa mga trigolords dyan? How can we solve for theta i? Okay, so minus na 90, di ba? So 90, okay, minus 23.75. So we have what? 90 minus 23.75. When, uh, 66.25 degrees. Okay. Next, sa letter C, uh, we can solve for the critical frequency. May formula lang yun, di ba? Ano yung formula ng critical frequency natin? That is, ano, square root of 81 and max. So, hindi to ba yung ionospheric sounding, no? Kasi binigay sa atin yung value ni n max, eh. So, yung electron concentration or electron density. So, it is simply equal sa square root ng uh, 81. Anong n max natin? Sabi rito is 1.8 times 10 to the 6. Kaya lang, guys. Uh, take note of the unit. Ang unit niya is per centimeter square. So, ibig sabihin kailan natin i-multiply ng uh, 100 centimeter per 1 meter. Tapos square. Okay, so kailangan may ganun, ha? Ay, cube ba? Oo nga, cube pala. So, kung cube, dapat naka-cube siya. Okay? Alright, so what do we get, guys? 
for our uh, FC. Okay, so we have 12 point 074 megahertz. Yeah, so that is the critical frequency. Kaya lang, ito yung, critic, ito yung baseline. Ang kailangan natin yung naka-angle. So we need to use that. Uh, we need to use that to solve for the MUF. So yung MUF guys, ha, ito yung naka-angle na. So kasi pag critical frequency, ang ano nun, pataas. Ang assumption pataas yung, yung pag-send mo. So critical frequency yon. What we need is the MUF, yung nakaslant. Pag nakaslant, MUF siya. So anong formula guys ng MUF? FC second theta. Okay? So what is our uh, FC? 12.074075. Uh, Multiplied by second theta. So, paano ba ilagay ang second sa calc 1 over cosine, no? 1 over cosine nung theta i. What's your theta i? 66.25. Okay? Ah, sige nga guys, what is your MUF? So we have 29.98. Kaya lang sabi nga natin, hindi pwedeng saktong-sakto sa MUF. Okay, you need to use okay, OWF. The optimum working frequency. Okay, ang optimum working frequency nakaslant pa din 'yon, ha? Kaya lang it is lower than the MUF because MUF is the extreme limit. So, ang formula ng OWF natin, 15% lower than kasi ng MUF eh. So, that's 0.85 ng MUF. Sige nga guys, what is our OWF? Bali 0.85 ni 29.98. So, we have 25.48. Hey guys. All right. Okay, no. So yeah, di ba na pag design na tayo, no, ng isang ah space ay isang skyway ah communication system. Now, last but not the least, no. Let's talk about the space wave propagation. Okay. Ah, uh, sa space wave propagation nga lang, guys. Ah, uh, we will not really discuss this into detail because ah, uh, the core principle of microwave communication is with this one. Okay, di ba? After nung ah, uh, after ng midterm, we're going to study antenna theory, and after the antenna theory, ah, uh, we're going to study. Microwave. Yung microwave, guys, no, yung primary uh, mode of propagation ng microwave is space wave. Okay? Kaya uh, hindi natin ito masyado i-discuss right now. So, ang siguro, ang pag-aaral lang natin dito is yung radio horizon niya. So, what is radio horizon? So, radio horizon, guys, uh, that may, may definition siya, no, but uh, really, the radio horizon is the limit. Okay? Ano yung farthest na pwede mong... Uh, ilagay yung transmitter at receiver mo no, sa isang microwave communication system. Hi okay, guys. So yun yung ibig sabihin ng ano, yun yung ibig sabihin ng radio horizon. Kasi one requirement guys is yung tinatawag nating line of sight. Okay? So kailangan magkakatapat, magkakakitaan no yung transmitter at receiver mo. Ah uh, sir, bakit meron siyang ano, meron siyang outer limit? Okay? I mean, meron siyang farthest limit. Hanggang dito lang pwede. No? It's because hindi flat ang Earth. Okay? 
Eh no, so siguro wala naman ako estudyante na naniniwala na flat ang earth, no, no, ikikita dito sa ano, no, sa TUP, ha? Okay? Baka mayroong mga flat earthers sa inyo, ha? Oh, so hindi man flat yung earth, right? So dahil hindi flat yung earth, guys, no, naaapektuhan ng horizon yung communication. Do you agree? Oh, no. So kasi kailangan line of sight eh. Sige, i-demonstrate ko sa inyo, no? Ah, uh, bakit hindi pwede na ano? Bakit hindi pwede na Uh, I mean, bakit merong uh, farthest na limit, no? Yung communication natin. Okay? Kapag ka uh, line of sight. So, let's say, guys, that, ano, no? This is the earth. Yan. Ito yung earth, let's say. Yan. So, for example, no? Nandito yung iyong transmitter. So, line deep flat yung earth, nandito yung transmitter mo, di ba? Okay? And nandito yung receiver natin. Yan. So, ito yung farthest distance nila kasi mula dito hanggang dito, ito yung ano niya eh, ito yung line of sight beam niya eh. Yung isa naman, uh, mula dito hanggang dito, ito yung line of sight beam niya. Sabihin natin ganyan, no? Adjust natin para sakto. Ayan. Gets you guys? Kasi beyond that, sasayad na dun sa curvature ng Earth yung communication. Okay? Naintindihan po. So, that's why, uh, ano no, uh, mayroon siyang uh, parang upper limit na hindi ka na pwede mag-go beyond. Kasi pa nag-go beyond ka, no, sa radio, uh, sa radio horizon natin, so, hindi na siya pwede mag-communicate. Okay, guys? Alright. Kaya lang itong dinemonstrate ko sa inyo is the optical horizon. The radio horizon kasi uh, medyo nagbebent siya ng konti. So this one can be uh, a little farther pa, no? So maybe uh, somewhere here. Because hindi siya, ano no, medyo... Oops. Yung radio horizon, guys, is medyo uh, bended ng konti. Paano ba? Ayan, no? So, medyo nakabend ng konti. Okay? So, hindi siya talaga straight na straight. So, medyo pwede pa siya mas malayo ng konti. Iyon yung idea about the radio horizon. But then of the day, no? Uh, it's because of the reason na yung Earth is not uh, flat. So, that's why hindi unlimited yung range ng ano natin. Hindi unlimited yung range ng uh, space wave natin. Okay? And that is also the reason, no? Ito yung parang sinagot ni Mr. Abelara kanina, you know? Na we use repeaters. Meron lang tayong distance na possible, no? So we will use repeaters to remedy that. Or if we don't want to use the repeaters, what do you think we should do? Kunyari, uh, gusto mo bang mapa-extend yung distance niya? Tingin nyo, ano yung pwede natin gawin? Sige nga, base dito sa drawing, guys. Yeah, no? So, ito lang yung limit niya eh, kasi sasayad na sa earth. Ano yung pwede natin gawin kung gusto nating palayuin yung distance na pwede? Na hindi makaka-apekto yung curvature ng earth. Very good. Taasan yung tower height. Because pag tataasan mo yung tower height, syempre, mas matagal bago siya sumayad dun sa earth curvature. Very good, very good. no? Very good, uh, Jonah and Gideon and Jovel. Very good. Very good. Okay? And as you can see, no, it is evident in the formula. Look at this. So the maximum distance is given by square root ng 2HT plus square root ng 2HR or kung na kilometers tayo, equal to sa square root ng 17HT times 17HR. So as you can see guys, no, uh, the only factor no, that affects the transmission distance is the heights of the antenna. If you increase no, the heights of the tower height or the antenna height, it means that uh, you will have a farther or much longer radio horizon. Ayan. Natanong yan sa board exam actually, guys. Eh. Ang question nun is, which of the following uh, can you do to increase the transmission distance between the transmitter and the receiver? So maraming mga choices doon. Increase the power, change the frequency. But in reality, no, the correct answer there is what? Increase the antenna height. Or increase the tower height where the antenna is. Okay? So antenna height pa rin, basically. You get what I'm saying? No? So yun ang ano, guys. Ha? Yun yung idea about the space wave propagation. Okay? So, let's answer the problem, guys. So, considering... Ah, by the way, no? Uh, yung una kong drawing, yung optical horizon, yung hindi pa nakabend yung radio wave, uh, yung radio horizon, guys, is four-third times farther or four-third times greater than the optical horizon. Okay? 
di ba meron tayo yung straight lang, yung straight lang na path. Pero hindi talaga talaga straight yun, no? medyo nakabend ng konti yun. And that is four thirds, no? uh, greater than the optical horizon. Okay, let's answer this problem, guys. Considering space wave propagation, the transmitting station transmits 100 watts of power at a frequency of 80 megahertz using half-wave dipole antenna uh, 20 meters above the ground. If the receiver antenna height is also a half-wave dipole with, with a height of 4 meters, determine A, the radio horizon, B, the optical horizon, C, field strength of the receiving antenna uh, if its path distance is equal to the radio horizon. Okay. Game. Let's do this. Yeah, so very good, ah. Huh? Uh, that's correct. If you increase the antenna height, mas malayo yung magiging transmission distance mo. Okay, so solve natin to, guys, no? First, we are asked to solve for the radio horizon. So, ano ang gagamitin nating formula? Dalawa kasi yung formula ni radio horizon. So, it is based on the units of the given. 20 meters and 4 meters. If that's the case, you, you, you can get the radio horizon in kilometers. This is given as square root ng 17 times 20 plus square root ng 17 times 4. Okay? So, ano yung distance in kilometers natin? Okay. So, we have 26.69. Is that correct? 26.69 kilometers. Okay? Yung mismong lalabas na sagot dyan, matik na kilometers na yun, ha? Yan. So, ito yung purpose ng ganito sa formula. Okay? So, hindi na kayo maghanap nung times 10 to the 3. Di ba usually dapat ganun para kilometer? Yan, matik kilometers na yan. Okay? So, let's have another one, guys. Uh, optical horizon, nabanggit na to kanina, ba? Na yung radio horizon natin, RH na lang ha, for the radio horizon, is four-thirds, okay, larger than the optical horizon. So if your radio horizon is 26.69 kilometers, four-thirds longer si, radio, uh, si optical horizon, so what will be our optical horizon? So, mga ilan ang ating optical horizon? Okay, 20.01, 20.02. Okay, so 20.02 kilometers, no? So, almost 20 kilometers, right? Uh, in other words. Okay. And finally, guys, no, we're asked to solve for the field strength of the receiving antenna. Uh, naalala niyo yung formula natin ng field strength kanina. So, yung field strength natin na square root ng 30, okay, PT, GT over D. So, this is for what? This is for uh, sky, sorry, this is for sky wave. Okay? Tapos, meron din tayo kanina for ground wave, di ba? Yung 120 pi HTI over lambda D. Right. So, for this one, guys, okay, uh, part C tayo. Iba uli yung formula natin ng ano, uh, electric field para sa space wave. Space wave na to, di ba? So may formula tayo for that. Square root ng 30 PTGT pa din. Okay? Over D. Technically, almost the same. Kaya lang, may kinalaman na yung antenna height natin. So we have 4 pi, okay, HT, HR, over lambda D. Ayan. So here's the full equation for the electric field strength ng ano uh, space wave propagation. Okay, may kinalaman yung uh, antenna heights natin, no? Kasi as you can see, antenna heights uh, really matter sa space wave propagation. Sa sky wave, antenna heights are negligible, no? So kaya uh, walang kinalaman in a sense. All right? So game, let's do this. So we have Square root ng 30 PTGT. 30. The transmit power is uh, 100 watts. Okay, GT natin is 1.64. Uh, Sir, teka lang ha, saan po nang galing yung 1.64? Uh, for half-wave dipole. 
Nako sir, paano niyo po nalaman? Okay? Uh, you, you just need to know. Right? <laughs> so from now on, dapat alam niyo na. Okay? Yan. Uh, for half-wave dipole, we have 1.64. Uh, ano pa ba yung iba sir? Don't worry guys, no? Dahil wala pa tayo sa antena. Uh, if in the exam, there's a similar problem, I would give the gain. No? Kasi wala pa tayo sa antena eh. Pero pag nasa antena na tayo, you need to memorize no? ano yung mga gains ng mga antena. Kung half-wave dipole, kung elementary doublet, kung isotropic radiator, may kanya-kanyang values kasi yun. Okay, but for now, uh, don't worry no, sa exam. If may similar problem na lalabas, I'll just give the gain of the antena. Okay? Divided by okay, distance, which is what? Uh, what's that? Gano'ng kalayo yung dalawa? Radio horizon. So, 26.69. So, 26.69 kilometers. So, times 10 to the 3. Okay? Yan. Multiplied by, multiplied by, okay, 4, 4 pi HTHR. So, 4 pi, HT is 4 meters. Tapos, ito 20 meters. Okay, divided by lambda. So, frequency natin, operating frequency is uh, 80 megahertz. So, we have 3 times 10 to the 8, okay, over, what's that? 80. So, 80 times 10 to the 6. Okay? Tapos, D is, ito ulit, no? So, kopyain lang natin. Alright guys? Okay, so what's the answer? Okay, so we have uh, 26.397 microvolt per meter. Okay. As you can see, no, the values is not uh, as large as the ground wave, no? Kasi nga sabi ko, maliit lang ang power requirement natin for uh, space wave. Alright, guys? Okay. So, okay lang? Alright. Okay. So yeah, and actually that's the end of our uh lecture you know, for today. So thank you. All right, no, so stop recording muna tayo, guys.